Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at a snapshot of America's medical marijuana market in Washington in one of the first uh, states to roll out and then kind of fast forward and take a look at the U.S. wholesale market as a gauge of what might happen. So Washington State was an early adapter of the medical markets in 1998 and adult use legalization or regulation in 2012. So since the passage of the latter, Washington's medical market has seen a steady decline and now has 44,500 patients in a state of 7.3 million people, according to the Department of Health. Washington State carries a national high 37% excise tax on both medical and adult use products, as well as a high operating cost for businesses in a market that some lawmakers want to overhaul. So is medical marijuana dead? Well, any such legislative overhaul may be too late for the medical market. None of the state's 187 licensed standalone dispensaries exclusively serve medical patients, according to research from ArcView Market Research and BDS Analytics. Despite the medical market taking a substantial blow, Washington is a lucrative cannabis market. In 2018, combined sales reached a billion dollars, with the figure forecasted to touch 1.3 billion by 2024. So Jeremy Kaufman is a part owner of a retail medical market brand called The Bakery in Seattle, and he told Benzinga that his store struggles with a horribly crafted legislation. So the state has a slow regulatory process and misallocated time and resources, he said. The amount of time and resources that are roped into frivolous traceability checks and overpackaging is almost incalculable, Kaufman said. In 2019, Washington's statewide traceability system experienced a four-day breakdown, resulting in thousands of losses for the sector. Jeremy said that he emphasizes with patients, adding that they're in the same place that they were before legalization. There's much, much more to be done, he said. Washington has experienced a decline similar in patients to other merged adult use medical markets. So while the standalone medical market fades away, Kaufman said he debates the legalization that killed the market. He states medical community still supports one another as it did in pre-legalization. What legalization in Washington really did is just force consumers into that demographic to continue servicing their needs with the infrastructure that was there pre-legalization. So Washington state lawmakers have heard about the concerns about the merge market in the past year, the legislative activity indicates that significant changes could be made that affect several aspects of the market. In August of 2019, the state legislative considered an array of rule changes. The proposals included a pathway to medical cannabis home deliveries, increased minority ownership, and allowing small business operators to increase operational capacity. In May of 2019, Washington State University's research team partnered with the Tacoma-based Puyallup Tribe. The research aims to develop standards for evaluating treatment agendas at natural healing clinics. So Washington State continues to assess and revise its merged marketplace. So this year began with an effort to essentially ban concentrates via 10% THC potency cap. And the measure was tabled not long after its introduction. So the subject of home delivery is still picking up steam once again, back by this pandemic. So while visiting 20 stores on 420, I saw $49 ounces. I would expect that to be the, uh, the everyday low price two years from now. We're already seeing that in, in Oregon at 30 to $40 an ounce, and it's been there for a couple of years. Not the, gross, not the best quality, but nonetheless, the price is there. So looking at this wholesale prices that ended 2019 on a strong note across the U.S., uh, according to the U.S. Spot Index from Cannabis Benchmarks from mid-February, it looks like the volume-weighted average for prices have fluctuated uh, from 7%, which represents $100 a pound. So we've seen a recent downward trend in national composite prices that could be attributed to this pandemic, but actually it looks like it's characteristic for this time of year. So there's not a lot of variables to draw off any definitive conclusions about the impact uh, from this uh, pandemic yet. Having said that, Massachusetts did close their stores. Nevada doesn't have any um, tourism whatsoever, so they have significantly lower sales. In fact, Nevada's uh, weighted average price per pound has fallen 10%. 
and nationwide, the cannabis ben- benchmark U.S. spot index remains well above a year ago. There could be other developments as well that could help keep the price from just bottoming out, including increased adult use sales in both new and mature markets, a better supply chain management, practicing and forecasting. You'll have improved processes at the production level that allows companies to be more nimble and efficient and an acceleration of business failures that allow stronger companies to thrive and reduce overall numbers of cultivators. Getting delivery options are going to be paramount. Uh, Looking at some of the online options, when we did 20 stores on 420 this year, this is the fourth year in a row we've done it. We noticed that 23 of the websites didn't even have an option for pre-ordering. So when that's sort of a mandatory option to pre-order, 23% of the stores we visited didn't have that option. 14% uh, use Leafly to sell their their inventory. So uh, it was interesting that they would use that platform being in Seattle, we're, we're tech heavy, but regardless, it's kind of an interesting look at who's selling what, how, when, and where. So do that every year. Uh, interesting reports. There's a couple other videos we already made about that. If you haven't seen them, check it out. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. And I'm out.